You guys good? <laughs> Smile once in a while because nobody's smiling. Like, oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Smile, maybe smile. See, Brother Alex wearing a pink um, shirt, so <laughs> I asked my wife this morning, do I look good in pink? She says, yeah. It doesn't sound convincing, but she said, yes. But I usually wear this for when I preach, so. Um, this is for the older ones. Who remembers Frank Sinatra? How about Elvis Presley? They sang the same song, right? I did it my way, right? I did it my way. Well, the message this morning is about the prodigal son. He wanted it his way. So we all know the story, so uh, we're gonna go through the, the verses, a lot of verses, so I'm um, probably we're not, gonna, we're not gonna read all of it, but we're gonna go through the, the verses. Luke 15, verse, um, verse 11. So I'm going to read, um, first I'm going to read about the younger son first. So there's three characters. Instead of having three points, I have three characters. The younger son the older son, and the father, right? We, all, we have those characters. So let's go. Verse 1, Jesus continued, there was a, a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out, of, out to a citizen of that country who set him to his field to feed, to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Stop there, um, Gabby. Thank you. So this story is about two sons. One wanted his share, one stayed home. All right, so in verse 12, the younger son says, Dad, I want, a, I want the share of the estate. So in, the, in that culture, that time, I'm pretty sure even today, right, um, the will, it's pretty much the will. When you have will that goes to your kids, um, um, you don't receive it until you, what? When do you get the money, that the will? 
When, you, when, the, when your dad or, or mom died, right, you don't get it before. You get it after. Well, this young man, he wanted now. He wanted his share of the state. So he's pretty much saying, God, I mean, Father, I want you dead because I want the money. That's pretty much what he's saying, right? He doesn't, he doesn't want having a relationship with his father. He just wants his money and spend it, right? So he's, he's a type of, he doesn't want a relationship with his dad. He just wants his share because he knows, he knows what it's all about. He sees it. Uh, probably his neighbor got their share when the, when the dad died or whatever. So he knows. He's aware of the custom at that time. So that's why he asked his, his father, what did the father do? Did he say, no way? What did he do? The father gave his share. The father gave his share. And today, if, if, if your kids were to ask you today, what would you tell them? <laughs> Brother Noel says, no. <laughs> Of course, I can't give it to you, especially now. I mean, it's, it's um, I mean, your parents still need the money to, to spend it for maybe they're saving money for a rainy day. Or maybe start, perhaps there's an insurance policy that you can't get anyway until your, your, your parents die, right? So, but what did the dad say? He, portion, he divided. And in, the port, in, the, in that time, it was the older son got two-third. The, old, the younger son got one-third. Because the older one got the most, right? Usually. Of course, you know, my mom always has that word, I need to be fair, son. So it's like, okay, um, do you follow culture or to be fair? So, but anyway... Uh, the story here, the, part of the parable that Jesus shared here is uh, the, the younger son got one-third. So let's continue. In verse, um, like I said, in verse 12, he divided his property with, between them. So he already divided, so the, the younger one got his share. The older one already got his. So it's not like, okay, I'll give yours and I'll give your brother's one later. The scripture says he divided it between them. So he's already divided, right? Not long after that, in verse 13, the younger son got together all he had. Let me stop there. So I was thinking in the scripture, gather all he had. So my thinking was when he had his share from his dad, he prob number one, like he probably sold it at a discount, right? Because it takes time to sell goats and um, animals, maybe portion the land. It takes time, all right? There's a process. But probably he got somebody to say, hey, I'll give it to you for discount and take care of the paperwork or whatever. But he, he, he pretty much, um, uh, I think he got it, he got the value of the property at, at the discount. Or, or, and also, he probably already spent some when he, he got the money because he, he gathered all he had. Meaning, as soon as he, he got the money, he spent it. After he spent it, he gathered and then he said, God, I mean, uh, Father, I'm out of here. I don't want a relationship with you. I got my share. I'm out. So what he did, he set out for a distant country. Meaning, he's not going to from Sacramento to El Grove. He didn't do that. He went from California to New York. I mean, a distant, far away. He want to be as far as uh, away from his father. What a, what a mean uh, son, huh? I mean, he got the money from the dad, and now he's leaving his dad as far as he can. Well, that's what he did in this story. Uh, before I forget this. The parables, when, um, when Jesus shared parables in the, in the Bible, 
It's about an earthly situation with a spiritual meaning. That's what it's all about, uh, parables. So Jesus is telling a story about earthly situation, but there's a spiritual meaning. So he set off for a distant country, and uh, there he squandered his wealth in wild living. So he couldn't wait and spend the money, right? And, and in a spiritual sense, when we don't have God in our lives, or you're, you know, you don't have God, and then, and then you, a person lives a, a sinful life, like it's a it's a high it's a short high. Like you either be doing whatever sinful things that people does, the next day it's gone, right? So in a way, with this this uh, young lad, spends his money and he squandered it, meaning he couldn't wait to spend it. And it's very true too. I think when when you have a lot of money, especially when you're young. Uh, person like this, you have a lot of friends, right? When they know you have money, you have a lot of friends. And then when your money is gone, no friends. I, I know somebody's like that. You know, I had a lot of money, a lot of friends. When the money is gone, where, where do friends go? You know, but they're after your money, after your, the money. So he spent it all. So he was living a sinful life um, in essence. That's what he did. So verse 14. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country. And he began to be in need. So he lost everything. So now he moved from California to New York. Like, he has nobody. He has no family. He left his family, his, his dad. He left his brother. Now he's on his own. You know, so he's in need. And severe famine, he, does, he doesn't say famine, he says severe famine. So extreme famine means nothing to eat. If you don't have money, nothing to eat. And I was, uh, I was reading a commentary. In those days, those people who are really poor, if they don't have anything to eat, they pretty much will boil their sandals. Because their sandals are made of some kind of animal, either skin or whatever. So they'll boil it. To, to eat it. That's how severe, that's how uh, poor people who doesn't have money do uh, in those times. So, he, um, so he was really in need. He was in dire predicament, a dire situation in his life. And uh, his life is going, go, going to the tubes in a hurry, right? I mean, he squandered his money, now there's a famine. And so no money, now there's a famine. Of course, when there's famine, people can help you, right? Also, there's people who are also in need and uh, in want. So what did he do? He went out and hired himself. Means sell himself. Means I want to work for you. I want to work for you. So he found this person or this man or this owner of a land. Said, could you hire me? He got hired. The only thing is, he got hired to feed, to feed pigs. And as the Jew, you don't associate with pigs, right? Because pigs like unclean animals, but that's what he had, he had to do. So in a way, that was an ultimate indignity for him as a Jew. He lost his dignity. His, he was in a uh, shameful um, state or in his life. He's very shameful. Verse 16. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Well, at least he still have more values, right? A little bit. He didn't steal the pods from the pigs. But uh, uh, he was at his lowest to uh, at that time, because he was hungry, but he was uh, wanted to eat what the pigs was eating. So he was willing to eat the pigs' food. He was desperate. So in verse 17, 
When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. So now he starts beginning to have his senses, sense, senses, right? Like, wait a minute. My father's house has so many food. I'm here willing to eat the pods that the pigs is eating. So he's beginning to have the senses. So um, in, a spirit, in our spiritual life, or when, when an unsaved person uh, doesn't have God, there's a conviction, right? That's a conviction. I need this more to live in than this. So there's a conviction, conviction in his life that he needs somebody. So there's this a picture of conviction in, in this young man. So he's, uh, he remembers his father. So maybe a friend, this unsaved person might be, have a friend who share um, the gospel to this person. So this person one day says, oh, oh, this, my friend of mine told me about this, uh, Jesus. You know, so that's, that's um, why it's very important for us to, to really do the command of um, a great commission. Because uh, people out there who doesn't know Christ, uh, we are the one, we are the ambassadors, we are the one to share the gospel to, to the lost. So when he came to his senses, he said, how many, okay, I read that already. So he remembers his father. His father has everything that he needs. So verse 18. So he made a plan now. There's a plan. There's, a, there's an exit plan from, from California, California to New York. There's, there's an exit plan. He want to exit New York, come back to California. All right, just to make it easier to, uh, for us to understand. So he, he has a plan. Let's read it. Verse 18, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. So I already have a plan, right? Imagine this, though. In, in, imagine us, one of your kids wanted to share. They left the, the house. Now they want to come back. You know, call you up. Hey, Dad, I want to come back. What the first reaction would be from the parents? You know, good for you, or you starve, or you know, there's you know, that's that's the human nature, right? Right, human nature to say, you know, you stay there. That's that's what you get, or whatever. But um, he probably thought about that. That's why he had an exit plan. In verse 19, he said, "I am no longer worthy to be called." Your son, make me like one of your hired servants. So he has already um, planned what to say to his father, right? So verse 20. What did he do in verse 20? He, so he got up. He got up and went to his father. So this is a 360, right? Imagine um, facing his father. He wants his money. He says, Dad, I'm out of here. He got his money. He goes this way. So it's a 360, right? He left his dad. He turns around, right? He's in New York. Now he comes to his senses. He made a plan or he has a conviction. Now he turns around. So there's a conviction, right? Right? Coming, going back to to God uh, in a spiritual sense. So he has a conviction. So he went. So he decided to turn his life around. And then the next verse says, but while he still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And what he did, he ran to his son, threw his arm around him, and kissed him. Wow. 
And I remember what Pastor always, not always, but he mentioned once in a while when he preached. Um, religion, religion, religion is reaching, man reaching to God, right? Man reaching to God. Christianity is God reaching to man. So when, in that sense, when the, when the son decided to turn his life around, God never left. He's, he's there. He's, he's the one already reaching to his son. He's so happy. He's, he's uh, threw his arm around him and kissed him. So hence, it's the title of our message today is The Power of His Love. By the way, what was the title of last, mes- last Sunday's message by Sister Nelly? You guys remember? Sirens of Fire. What about pastor's message two weeks ago? Prayer. Oh, good. So remember this, the power of his love. So the next messenger will ask, the power of his love is what I uh, titled today's message. So the father ran to his son. Verse 21. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Remember, he said this in verse 19, but I want to make a comparison. We'll see something here. There's a difference in what he said. Uh, verse 19, Gabby, please. Verse 19, he says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Verse 21, please. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer be called your son. What's the difference? What is the difference? There's a difference. The first one says, make me a hired servant. It means he wants to work out his salvation. He wants to work out, he wants to do good works. Right? He wants to do good works in, in coming back to God. Right? But if you will read chapter, uh, verse 19, he said he wants to do good works. Verse 21, he left it out. He left it out. He already knew that salvation is not true good works, or coming back to the Father is not true good works. So um, what did he receive? He received grace. He received grace. Grace is a gift that we don't deserve, right? Right? So he, reserved, he received grace and mercy. Mercy is something that um, we have, we got, that we, no, something that we're supposed to be punished for, but we didn't get it. Because the son came back, imagine he's probably saying, oh, I'm going to get punished for, for coming back. But the father uh, gave him grace and also mercy. He got swag. Uh, young people use this word swag a couple of years ago. What does swag mean, young people? <laughs> Tiffany? Swag? Save with amazing grace. You guys had that shirt before, remember? Save with amazing grace. I'm almost done, guys. I know you guys see your cars don't get washed, right? Majority of you guys. Verse 22. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. So the robe signifies uh, royalty. It belongs to the family of God, right? Not the best robe. It wasn't the cheap robe, robe but it's the best robe. The ring signify um, authority. It belongs to the family now. Also, it signify as in accessible. It's accessible to, the, to whatever the father has. And in those culture, um, in that time, they have a signet ring. If they were to go buy something in the, in, in the market, or whatever people sell, they'll have that ring and they'll have a wax and they just 
punching on the wax, it will, and then there's a whatever on that ring, it will show that that belongs to that person. It will be charged to that person. So uh, accessible to the father's uh, belongings. And third, uh, sense of belonging. Of course, um, he belongs to the family of God now. He belongs to uh, the father's uh, house. Uh, verse 23, bring the fatted calf and kill it. Now, fatted calf is, in those times, the, the separate certain um, calves or, or cow or whatever animal they have, they'll feed them the best. See, they can't afford to feed everything the best, but they'll probably pick maybe five of them or four, and they'll feed the best. Uh, like um, sometimes Bel Air or Raleigh's will sell cows that is corn fed, right? So fatted calf is pretty much the best um, there is. Have you guys heard of Kobe beef? Brother Rennie, right? Kobe beef? Kobe beef is a lot of fat in between the, the meat. So when you grill it, all the flavor comes out, right? right? As a matter of fact, um, Kobe Bryant's parents went to Kobe a restaurant and they, they liked the, the beef so much that they called their son Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Right? So just a nugget for you there since I'm, since I'm a Laker fan, so share that information. All right, so uh, that reminds me, we ate goat yesterday. It wasn't fatted goat, but it was still good. Well, we had a good time. So, um, and that's, when it says fatted calf, I mean, God gives the best. He gives the best to his people, to his children. He never gives leftovers. He doesn't give second hands. He gives the best. The father didn't say to the servants, hey, bring the one that is dying. Or bring the one we killed yesterday, the half that we, we kept. No, he said to his servant, bring me the best one, the fatted calves. So the blessings, um, when we are in the family of God, the blessings uh, is always the best. Because why is the best? Because we have God himself. He gives the best. Verse 24, for, for this son of mine was... Loss is now found. So they began to celebrate. So now we talk about the older son. Meanwhile, back to the ranch, right? Okay, so verse 25 and 27 is pretty much uh, stating that um, the older brother is working in the field. Hard labor, you know, like he's working hard, probably sweating. I mean, he's, he's doing the father's business to maintain whatever he needs to do his work, right? Verse 28, um, Gabby, please. The older brother, be oh, not that one. Okay, I already explained 25 to 27. So he asked um, the higher servant what's going on. So in, his, in verse 28, when he find out the, the answer of the higher servant, he says, the older brother became angry and, be, and refused to go in. Why is, he, why is he so angry? Why is the older brother angry? Say to yourself, why he's angry? Do it practical now. Let's say one of your siblings left the house, took the money, and then wants to come home. What's your reaction when he comes back? What's the human nature reaction? Well, you came back. You got your share, right? That's like human reaction. He became angry. Why is he angry? Who, who made the decision to welcome the, son, the, the brother home? The father, right? The father made the decision to welcome the younger brother home. When he became angry, in a spiritual sense, he doesn't agree with 
the grace that the father gave to the younger brother. He doesn't, he doesn't believe in grace. In actuality, he believed in good works. Right? He doesn't, he, he doesn't want to go in. See, he, once he goes in in the house, means he has to agree with the grace that he gave, that the father gave to the son. But he doesn't want to accept grace. He believes in good works. So he became angry and refused to go in. Okay, he does, uh, he does not like what the father did to his younger brother. Um, he wants to accept it. He doesn't accept it either. So obviously, when he doesn't want to go inside the house, he doesn't want to accept grace, grace either. Uh, what the father. So the father tried to convince him to come in the house. Convince him to go in the house. But of course, the story goes, he, he never go in the house. Right? It's, a, it's, it's like a picture of a table. When there's a table, one chair here, one chair over here, and the father's chair here. The lost younger son came home. He's sitting at the table. Versus the older son, he's not there. He's outside the house. He cannot sit in the table. In, in the father's table unless he comes inside the house. Verse 29. But he answered his father. This is, uh, he's, he's getting uh, mean now. He says, but he answered his father. He says, look. He didn't say, father. Right? With, with respect, right? He says, Look. How um, this disrespecting his dad, right? His father. So he's telling his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you, never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my father, I mean with my friends. Let's stop there. First of all, he's lying. He is lying. Remember in verse... 12, I think, God, the father already divided the estates. So he cannot say, you never gave me. He already had his share. He already had his share. So he, he's lying. And when the, the last part of the message is, I was celebrating with my friends. He doesn't, again, he doesn't want to come in to the father's table. He wants to celebrate outside, outside the father's house. To, to what? Celebrate with his friends. Right? Celebrate with his friends. Okay, my conclusion. Verse 1 and 2, chapter 15. Verse, um, in chapter 15, uh, before I go, chap chapter 15, um, Jesus shared three parables here. The lost coins, the lost sheep, and then the, the prodigal son. So, verse 1, it says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. This group of people represents the younger son. You may ask yourself, why... why um, Tax collectors are, are grouped in the sinners. Well, back in those days, tax collectors, when they collect tax, they charge double, maybe triple, to pocket the, the overcharge. So it's a, it's a common knowledge in that time that when they see a tax collector, they say, hey, he's a sinner. You know, he's bad. He's he collecting um, more money than necessary. So this group of people represents the younger son. Right? So they need God. They are lost without him, meaning Jesus. 
So they live a sinful life. So uh, verse 2. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. As we know, when uh, there's a scripture, when, um, when every time Jesus eat with the sinners, like uh, the Pharisees will judge Jesus says, man, he's, he's eating with them. Because when, you, when, when someone is welcome to their home, you're pretty much, you're one of them, right? You're one of them. So, well, the Pharisees and the, the teacher of the law is, is the type of the older son. Right? They, they, they don't say they don't sin, they don't kill nobody, they do good works, they, uh, they do whatever um, the Bible say. Yeah, perhaps they even come to church, Bible studies, but never have a relationship with, with, with the Father. Right? So the Pharisees like, no, we're, we're good. We're good. We don't need, uh, we don't need um, Jesus. Uh, we don't need Jesus to uh, tell us what to do. As a matter of fact, um, Pharisees in those days, they were so religious that, you know, they wear robes at that time, right? Loose, loose robes, right? Well, when they go to the market or walk in the street, they will tie their robe so tight. So when they walk, they make sure that their robes will not touch an unclean person. Was a sinner. So that's how religious they were. Because they want to do good works. They don't want to be judged by God that oh, they touch an unclean person. So these two group of people need God, right? We know that. The, old, the young, younger son and the older son. These two groups need God. And there's a third son in this story, as we all know, the one telling the story, right? Which is Jesus, the Son of God. What? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that will love it, believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And it says in John 14, 6, John 14, 6, he says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, um, Jesus is the only way. We all know that. But Jesus is the only way. For John 3, 6 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So this two group of people needs the Lord. Whether it be a sinful man or the older brother stays home and do the right thing. You know, but both group needs Salvation. All right, so I hope you um, got something from this message um, today. Uh, I pray that um, all of us have time to set a time to really uh, share the gospel to the lost. As um, the pastor said today, that uh, there's a lot of things that has happened since. Uh, we support them. There's a lot of um, work has been done, but a lot of work needs to be done. And we, we thank you for your support once again. So the worship team is going to lead a song, and pastor is going to come to the front to close it. Thank you. <laughs>